you notice that if you have them here, you have your recent ones. You could also pin them. Why would you pin them? So you could keep track of the ones you already did. So whenever I give you so many assignments, you could actually have them here pinned so you know if I open up this project, I see it. If I go open up Ohan Coupling, I could pin the ones. I don't need to pin them, but I could actually keep my final one there, my sheets, so that they're always present when, as soon as I open it. Additional again. All right. So now we're going to start the next part. So now we're going to go back like we did, open a new standard part. And this time here, we're going to go start a plane on the, again, you could click up here on the YZ, or you could go open up origin under YZ. And now we're going to draw a sketch using the line tool like we've done before. Draw a line, and we draw an L. We're going to start from either this way or the top. I'm going to start from the bottom. Going from the center, I'm going to go this time make a distance from the origin right away. So I'm going to type in 1.575. And then I'm going to cancel that and draw another line from the origin up, which means it's already going to be constrained at 1.575. So now by doing that, I automatically constrain it to the origin. So it won't move from that location. Sometimes the dimensions will get a little tricky to grab them, but give it patience and you'll be able to move them back and forth. Once you've done the line, and if you notice, why is it dark? Because I have a constraint to my origin. I'm going to go use the offset tool. So now the offset tool should be right over modify, like in AutoCAD and any other software you use from Autodesk. They're always in the modify tab, offset, and we're going to click the line that we just built. Click, and we could drag outward. If we know the distance we're going to put, we could type it in right away, which is 0.472 and right away it's again constrained because we have the dimension right over here. The next step to do is just to connect the lines. Draw a line connecting from one point to the next. Draw a line connecting from one point to the next. And if you notice my drawing is fully constrained. If you look in the bottom right corner it even tells you fully constrained drawing. Once that is done, we're going to press finish sketch. We're going to extrude it now. And we're going to make it with the option symmetric. Right over here from the middle. And we're going to type in what distance? 1.575. Press OK. And we have our L shape chair looking object. We press OK and we have it built. All right, and now like a good practice, we should just do file save as, just so it's good remembering to save it. We'll call this one tutorial two. <coughs> now that we extruded the piece, we're going to use the shell option. Now the shell option, do we understand what it does? It makes a void inside the object. So we're going to use the shell, which is found again under modify. We're going to choose shell, and automatically it's going to grab the piece. If you look carefully, it kind of shows you the outline of what it's cutting out. But in this case here, we're going to remove some faces. We're going to remove the top face, so remove faces, one face, shift pan. We're going to move the back face. We're going to move the under face, and I think we're going to move also this front face as well. And we're going to put a thickness of 0.197. And press OK. Press the home button and it's going to bring it back. So again, we did the shell option. And then we once you have the shell option open, you clicked on remove face. And you click on the front top face, the back face, underneath face, and the front bottom face. So it kind of gives it this look over here. All right. So that's the shell option. Hit save. If the shell didn't work the first time, you could always delete it. But again, it shows you the preview of how it looks before you're doing it. Even if I made a mistake and I added the wrong number, I could go back and add the thickness. All right? You even have inside, you have the outside, you have both directions. In our case, we wanted inside shell. Good. Now we're going to go use the sketch option again. And we're going to grab the front face, so this piece right over here. 
and again it aligns it us to the middle of our screen. We're going to go use the slot option which is under again the rectangle and we're going to go use slot center to center. So we have center point, center to center right over here. We're going to click and now again it's important that we do the same thing again. We click one on one side of the origin, one on the other side. Make sure it's straight. And we're going to make it a thickness that we could change later on. And now we're going to do like we did before. We could do a construction line, right? Do we need a construction line to make it centered? Yes, we do. So we could draw the same technique we did before. Construction line. Draw a line across, like so. Go again, do symmetric. And draw one, two, three. So now you know it's going to be placed exactly equally among both sides. If we didn't need it to be equal, it's okay. But in this case, we want it to be equal. We're going to go add our dimensions. We don't need it to equal. No, we have to go higher. We don't actually need it equal. We didn't really need it equal, so we're going to undo it. Yeah, we're going to change that. All right, so now let's go first add our dimension. From this dimension here, to the line, it should be what? What's that dimension, guys? Hold on one second. The upper side? First thing we should do, actually, is we should dimension our this guy first. This should be what? 0.236. So we have our thickness there. Then we should do our distance from center to center, right? Should be what? It's not given there? I thought it was. Hold on one second. It's going to be here. 0 0.590. Okay. Next we're going to do is we're going to line it to the middle. We're going to click from this edge here to the center. Is how much? 0 0.787. So now it's placed nicely in the I guess it's the middle of this object. So we have all the dimensions we need for this extrusion before we do it. We're going to press finish. Well, let me just double check. If I check here, it's the number here is good. Oh, this is, should be the same dimension. So the next step we're going to do, again, we're going to make it right over here. We're going to use coincide. We're going to go choose the center line. Thank you. And then we're going to click the line here, the edge. No, I did the wrong mistake again. It's the center point with this edge here. Oh. Now it stopped working. Coincide with this edge here. Okay. This side here with this edge here. There we go. So now it's fully constrained to the center of that circle. It's aligned perfectly with the line. So again, if you saw that I made an error, you could go press it again, click on it, click the center where the dimension is, and then afterwards click on the line and it should push it down and make it fully constrained again. All right? I'll redo that again. Look, again I do the center right here coincide. I go from the center point right over here with the line and it should adjust it perfectly aligned. The next you're going to do is you're going to extrude it. Extrude in the opposite direction and we're going to go how much? We're going to go to, you're going to use the to option, and you're going to select this face over here. The back face, you're right. So you're going to go to the back, which is this face over here. If you're not sure of it, you can do shift pan and click on this face here, and you know it goes all the way to it. Are we going to cut a hole? No, we're going to make it a solid, so we're going to join it together. And we're going to press OK. So now our piece is going directly into our object. We're going to save in case it crashes. And now we're going to use the cut feature to cut a hole in the center of it. So we're going to do a new sketch. We're going to click the front face. And now we're going to use the slot again. We're going to use the two center points, right? And we're going to use from this point here to this point here. See, so click the black and it's going to show you where it is. And then you're going to make a distance of 0.118. It was a diameter or a radius? Uh, 
Yeah, so let me undo that. Let's do it again. Go from, again, click on the black, see, select it, click again, select it, and we're going to change it to radius of uh, 0.118. That makes more sense. Now that that's done, we're going to extrude, cut it. So we're going to use extrude, finish, extrude, cut, opposite direction. And we're going to go all the way through, right? Through all. So it cuts all the way through the hole. If I press OK, you notice if I press Shift Pan, you notice it goes all the way through. Let's go press it back into the middle. And let's hit Save again. Again, I keep saving in case it were to crash and whatnot. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to use the Rip feature. Now, the Rip feature is a funny little tool. It will work for you once. Then if you press Undo, it probably will never work again until you close it, open, close it, open it. And it'll open up and work randomly on a random time. So again, if you have any issues with the rib, it's, it's, I think it's something, I don't know, it works. It's a hit and miss object. So the first step we're going to do is we're going to open up our plane option on the works, work features. And we're going to use mid plane between two planes. And now what we're going to do is we're going to choose the first face, go to the other side, choose the other face. And you notice it brings a plane right down the middle of our object and it adds a work plane tab. From there, we're going to go click on Sketch, and we're going to click the mid-plane we just built. But do we see the object? No. So we need to cut through it. So what do we need to do is we need to use our slice geometric, which is going to be under here, I think. No? Bottom over here. There we go. It's at the bottom. Right here, we see the slice graphics. Click on it, and it kind of shows us the slice view of how it looks. If we see that the sketch is getting in our way, we could always just do or sh hide the uh, sketch. Show. I think we'll leave it for now. We need it, so we actually can use it. So now we're going to go and draw the profile over here. The first thing before you do that, you, we're going to use the project edge cut right over here. So now what it did, it gave us the lines of the object that we just cut in half. Is our piece cut? No, it's visually just cut. If I undo it, you'll see the whole piece. From here now, we're going to draw lines going up from this point here. We're going to go up 0.197. And we're going to go across, and we're going to touch this point right over here, like so. And we're going to press Finish Sketch. So now we have this little line profile that we just built. We're going to go use our rib option under create. And now hopefully it works the first time. We're going to click profile. This is our profile. OK. And now we're going to go do direction. We're going to make sure we're doing, we're using this normal one, right? No, nope, parallel to sketch we're using. And then we're going to use direction down. And it works perfectly. Look at that. First time. We're going to go press the distance thickness of. Point zero, oh sorry, point 0.197. We're going to go in both directions, like so. And we're going to go to the next object, right over here. And we're going to make sure it's symmetric. And we're going to press OK. So now if I look, we have a nice piece. All we have left to do is we could go on this work plane, right click, and turn off the visibility so we do not see it anymore. All right, so then you could go rotate the views, and that's it. That's it for tutorial number two. So I'm going to save it, and again, thank you so much.